Hello, beautiful souls, and welcome back to another episode of Channel Your Light, Own Your Intuitive. If you have not done so already and you resonate with these videos, I would ask you to like, share, and subscribe to the channel, and be sure to click the notification bell so that you can be notified when the videos are coming out. And of course, it is an energy exchange every time that you connect on this channel. I am connecting with your energy. That is the fluid co-creation of our higher selves, spirit. So I wish to dive into this message. I have a slew of channels from the last month and a half. And in the last week, they have been coming, I want to say like waterfalls, cannonballs, very fiery, action-oriented, energy. This is an important aspect because it's also following the flow of the natural rhythm and the momentum of the energy at this time. It is after post post illumination I am hearing once we have illuminated that which has been blocking us, confusing us, holding us down. I'm being told that many of you have probably felt this push from both sides. So there is this element of this darker energy feeling like it's holding you down, pushing you from one side. And then you have this other side, which is all of this light and this desire and this yearning and this truth that's also pushing at you from the other side. This is an important... I want to say an important catalytic energy and it could not be more perfectly divinely timed because that which seems to hold you down and that which wishes to propel you forward are actually working in tandem. It's like I am seeing the yin and the yang, the dark and the light working together, seemingly in opposition, but the threading of these two and the push between the two of them, it's almost like I'm seeing when somebody pops a seed, Johnny Appleseed, when they pop a seed out of a seed pod and you squeeze it from the bottom and it pushes it, pushes the seed up and out, it's like the two fingers pushing from the bottom of the seed pod is one side is dark and one side is light. There is this understanding that as they intertwine and the forces come close and push up against each other, it literally forces the catalytic energy of the center of you, the seed of light, to push forth or burst forth from its pod. This is an incredible energy. Some will say, deep surrender. In these moments, I'm seeing somebody come to a point where the second that you sit in deep surrender, allowing both energies to move and shift and intermingle and push against each other, it's like your seed naturally levels up. And that will only happen through deep resistance. I am also being told there's someone on here. Wow, I had a dream about this, which is tied into it just the other night. And uh, now I understand the deeper meaning and the message of who this is for. In the dream that I had, uh, myself and two other energies were called to uh, someone's house. And when we went to this person's house, it was not their house. Everything was in chaos. The energy was off. And when we went up to the rooftop of this house or the side balcony or gazebo just outside of it, there was a rainbow water slide. And it was a tubular water slide. I'm going to describe this in detail because the imagery will be significant. You may see it as I describe it. This portal, it is a portal. This is someone's energy. Your energy is a rainbow portal. It is closed and condensed. It is a portal for others. However, the portal has been overloaded. Your energy has been overloaded and it was literally leaking at the seams. And when I say leaking, it was in multiple places, 
there is too much water. It's like the water main where too much water is flowing through it is exploding underneath the surface. Be prepared. You may find this internally an emotional state. You may find this energetically holding up the space for other people, which is actually intrinsically tied to what this channel is about. At the juncture in this dream, as I stood there and I said to the two other beings on the astral plane that were there with me, I said, someone needs to address this now and bring in a support or drain out some of the energy because the portal cannot contain that much energy nor hold the space for it. It will burst. In a way, what happens after that? is about people and energies disappearing, being in one place and then in another. Because your energy portal, whoever this message is for, because your energy portal is overloaded, it's like people's energy shows up and then it disappears. People don't know how they got in your energy and then they don't know whether they're in your own. It's because you're holding too much energy of other people. You cannot contain. There must be an equilibrium or a balance that happens, particularly those who have higher frequencies and find yourself in cities, communities, family settings where there is a lot of lower dense energy that's in the 3D mentality. Um, I'm seeing somebody with blindfolds on, like you can't see that, but you are about to be awakened to see how, A, how powerful your vessel is, B, that you are not meant to carry the energy of others, and C, you are meant to be a powerful house of energy that maintains a high frequency. And that is the greatest service, not just to others, but to you, because when you are in service to you, and I do not mean the selfishness, I mean the uh, service of high frequency. When you maintain that, all of the frequencies around you begin to find the power within them to raise their frequencies on their own, getting their footing underneath them rather than using you as the bridge. The second imagery that came along with this, and this was after the dream when I was consciously waking, I was being shown there is somebody who is a bridge for other people's energy. There are so many people's energy on your bridge. The bridge cannot maintain the amount of weight that is on it. If you are the bridge and you have 10,000 people on one side of your bridge, but your bridge can only maintain the frequency of 5,000 at a time, it will collapse. I'm seeing the cables collapsing. I'm seeing the wires becoming very, very tense on the one side of the bridge. And it's the side of the bridge of your energy for those who are at the 3D, lower dense energy that haven't awakened, aren't doing their own work. It is because they're relying on you as the bridge and your energy to do the work for them. Therefore, they do not do the work. This is a dynamic of codependency. This is also rampant in the communities of those who help and serve others. We must redefine what help actually means. We have to redefine what service actually means as we move into the new earth plane. Being of service to others is not carrying their energy for them. It is not doing the work for them. That actually is an indicator that you yourself are fulfilling a wound or a deep need of importance or lack thereof that you are attempting to fulfill within yourself. This is often unconscious for those who are in service and those who are of help to others. The reason why this is deeply unconscious and something we don't even realize that we're doing Oftentimes, if you think about it, the people that you serve and the things that you want to fight so hard for, for other people, where you see injustices, is typically somewhere that you face tremendous injustice. If you want to help others, it's usually because people didn't help you. And put this where it fits and take it where it resonates. As a teacher, I have learned through my journey and as somebody who really is here in service to others, I have had to learn and cultivate and understand deeply that I am of greatest service to others when I am empowering them with tools and helping them to raise their frequency, not by doing it for them, not by being the bridge where they have to rely on my energy, but giving them the tools to, ah, uh, uh, what are the right words for this, Ava? 
she's saying that um, just she's telling me to just go with it so I'm just gonna go with it I'm not gonna worry how this sounds to other people or how people take it or if somebody is offended if you are a teacher here in service because I'm not here to make people comfortable you will either feel like you are at home with me and you will felt seen and heard or I will trigger something in you. And if I have triggered something, I need you to know deeply on a soul level, the triggering is identifying something that will free you. It is never an intentional malevolent energy. It is never a judgment. It is simply a realignment. And we cannot realign if we do not identify what is out of alignment. Sometimes it is through someone's energy or frequency. Perhaps someone has spoken a word to you. Perhaps I have said something in a channel that has triggered you. I am trying to align others to a frequency, not by trying to make you align to it, but by simply being my frequency, by simply being and existing in my truth. And that is ultimately intrinsically part of what I have learned on this journey as a teacher. As a teacher, I am a student. I am a student of myself. I am a student of my students. And my students are my teachers. I am a student of the divine. I cannot teach if I am not willing to be a student, if I am not willing to consistently look at how I teach, why I teach, look at the dynamics. Every individual that shows up to be taught always has a slightly different journey. If I am unwilling to teach from a standpoint of being a student, the only thing I am teaching is myself. And furthermore, also part of this dichotomy is this. As a teacher, if I have to be a student of myself, if I wish to teach, I can only teach the roadmap that I have cultivated on my journey. I can only teach the wisdom that I am living. I can only teach the wisdom that I am living. And if I am teaching a wisdom that I am not consciously living and doing and breathing and reevaluating, it's not really the energy of a teacher. It's the energy of somebody on a pedestal trying to be seen. This is actually a really hard message for me to deliver. A long time ago, I posted, this was years ago, every teacher is a student and every student is a teacher. The amount of energetic projection that I got from that single statement and post was so enormous. I don't know that I even have words for it. And it was never intended to disrespect teachers in any capacity. It's actually a deep honoring of what is required to be in a place or a position of being able to teach others. It was never a disrespect and it was grossly misunderstood. And yes, it triggered a lot of people's wounds. Whomever this bridge is, you are literally a bridge to fifth dimensional consciousness. Your love, frequency, and unconditional light is why you were recruited, because you could maintain the frequency of the bridge. However, there are times that you get caught because you so selflessly help others. You get caught on this place where your bridge is overloaded on the side of others who latch on and who are unable, unwilling, or do not understand or, un or are unconsciously utilizing your energy as the bridge to do the work. They will feel great for a moment, but then they will go back to it. It does not create real change. It simply gives them a taste. As a healer, I recognize my role is to channel through the divine, utilizing my gifts to show people what is possible in their energy so that they have a breathtaking moment of understanding the divine energy that is within them that flows co-creatively between all of us as individual souls and spirits on this earth plane. It is a channeling of divine energy through a divine channel, which is a sacred task. What is also true as a healer, it is not my job for people to rely on me to heal them. That is not the purpose of a healer. The purpose of the healer is to help someone to heal an area or a place in them, which then directs them towards getting the strength to begin healing themselves. Healers aren't here to heal people. They're here to help people learn how to heal themselves. And yes, sometimes that is through giving people healings. 
But for them to continually have to come back to you, you are creating a bridge where you are bearing the burden of other people's energy and it disempowers them. It is a disservice. We need everyone to be in their full personal power. Think about this. It does not take away from you. It empowers you further. Think about how many more people you can reach. Think about the ripple effect of aiding someone to say, here, let me help you stand up on your own. That is the way of the new earth. It is not about carrying other people. And do not be mistaken. There are times where we do need someone else to carry us for a moment. I'm being reminded of the Footprints in the Sand poem where we ask God, why did you desert me? And they look upon you and say, child, this is where I carried you. You were not deserted. Those are my footprints alone. And forgive me because I do not know this actual poem word for word. It's just a reference that's coming in as a sacred validation for someone on here. There are times where I have needed someone else with a very powerful energy to carry me for a moment in time, not because I needed to rely on them, but because I needed them to carry or provide me sanctuary or protect my energy so that I could heal in my own rights, so that I could stand back on my own two feet. I will tell you that is the power of another healer. What is also the power of that healer is they will not allow me to use their energy instead of doing my own work. Instead, they allow me a reprieve, a place to come home, to heal within my own self, to be protected in a beautiful sanctuary of energy so that I may stand up once more. We are all here helping each other to stand in our own power. We are not here to help each other through those unconscious dynamics of codependency. And I truly, friends, am coming to you from a place of actively teaching, doing hundreds of readings, being in a place of really having to consistently look at myself. And I have to check myself sometimes being here in service as a healer. I have to consistently ask myself the question, am I helping you or hurting you? Am I hurting you by making you rely on my power, entertaining that dynamic? Or am I helping you by standing on your own two feet and giving you a moment of reprieve so that you can stand in your own power? One of the messages that began a month and a half ago, and it just continues to build momentum and get stronger, is it is time for the teachers to rise. It is time for those who are fledglings, who have been gaining your strength and courage, who have been gathering all your parts and pieces. It is time for you to become the map shifter. It is time for you to stand in your knowing. It is time for you to take flight. There is no shame in the fledgling stage. In fact, no one does anything of great service or great skill or takes flight without building that courage and that knowledge and that strength and the foundations that are deep support that cannot be shaken underneath them. It is time for the fledglings to fly. It is time for the fledglings to jump. It is time for all of the teachers to stand up in the place of what they're teaching, not worrying about the dynamics of the previous old world, old earth, 3D dynamics of what a teacher is and what that looks like. We are here in the era of self-empowerment, of an elevated consciousness which recognizes the divinity within the self, and so too does it recognize the divinity in all others. We are not here to praise ourselves and have people look upon us on a pedestal. As teachers of the new earth and the elevated unconditional love, we are here to remind, activate others' divinity within themselves and then provide the tools for every individuated soul to be able to stand in their own mastery, in their own right. We must have everyone in their personal power. 
whoever the rainbow water slide is, and yes, it was a rainbow one. It was very clear. Every color was segmented. The red, the root, was what was exploding in your energy and leaking consistently. So was the yellow ray frequency in your energy. This is your root chakra, your I am foundation, how you do things. It was also your personal power, where you have been taken away your personal power. Both of those energies is what was leaking out of your rainbow water slide. This must be corrected so that people's energies can be placed back into their own energy. In addition, the yellow area of the personal power or solar plexus reference is this. You are the most powerful when you are completely accountable for your energy. Simply by standing and saying, I will not be accountable for other people's energy, automatically aligns your energy in coherence, calling back your personal power. It automatically requires anyone who was engaging you to then be accountable for their own energy because you are no longer playing in the codependent dynamic. The second you stop playing, there is no one for them to play out the dynamic with. That is your personal power. That is what everyone needs to be in. Imagine if the world was full of people who are in their personal power and completely accountable for their own energy. Imagine that. None of us would be doing things that take away from us. We wouldn't be sacrificing ourselves. We wouldn't be giving ourselves away. Our bridges wouldn't be falling down or collapsing under the weight of the burden of others' energy. Because everyone would be a bridge, a bridge unto themselves, a mastery of themselves, whole within themselves. That is the I am presence, personal power, the golden era, the new earth birthing within you, within all of us, and on the earth plane. Do you see how each of you are a mini micro of the macro and the macro comes into full alignment of a new earth elevated consciousness when all of the mini micros birth the new earth of accountability and personal power within each and every person. I am curious to know if you know you are the bridge and your bridge is about to give way. I was also shown, or rather I also asked, for whomever's bridge that was, whoever you were, that this will sound interesting and strange. However, sometimes this is what I do. I do ask and visualize the divine placing a beautiful hand of the mother of all creation underneath that area of the bridge and slowly sweep the other energies off the edge of your bridge so that your lines, your tethers, your bridge energy can rewrap itself. It can realign and rebalance, removing the weight of the others. So you are, whoever this is, you are literally, I watched it, being, you are literally being held up by the divine to give you the strength to remove the other energies off of your bridge. It is not your job to be the bridge of other people's energy. It disempowers them. Your job is to be the bridge and hold the frequency, saying this is what you can do. This is where you are going. You simply need to do the work energetically within you. I will end this part of the channel here. Friends, I'm seeing the word number 20. Ava's like, mom, you have 20 other channels that you need to put out. So I will leave this one at that. Please let me know in the comments if this resonated. If you are a bridge, please heed the divine's advice for you. You will only be more whole within yourself and all others around you get to be whole within themselves because you took the simple act of being accountable and not allowing others to take away accountability or disrespect your energy is what I am hearing in that capacity. We are at such a beautiful gateway, my friends. The solar annular eclipse really is the fire. Likely most of you have felt it. The barriers are being removed. It is the push and pull of both sides being pushed together to pop the seed or bring the seed fully to be seen. I am very excited to share with you these other messages that have been coming through. In case you don't know or hadn't heard, October 14th on the new moon, 
on the solar annular eclipse you can begin an entirely new spiritual expansion you can click to join that in the video description box below this is 21 days of gathering all pieces of you anchoring in moving through all 12 dimensions all 12 rather 13 chakra energy centers and magnetizing your energy to a place of empowerment and wholeness if you wish to join this and have a support of the divine hand guiding you please join us in the video description box below you can find all of the details there i will be delighted to see you in that space and container of spiritual expansion as always i'm sending you all much love light peace healing transcendence personal power accountability and freedom until next time beautiful souls